What is going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to break down three things you need to do before you move out of your parents' house. Now, that's a very popular topic on this channel, moving out of your parents' house and all that stuff. So since I'm seeing all this interest, I wanna do everything I can in my power to prepare you. So today that's what we're gonna be talking about. So we're gonna get right into this. The first thing you need to do before you move out of your parents' house, if you haven't done this already, is read my book. I'm not being funny, I'm not joking. This is a shameless plug, but there's a reason behind this. So I have a book out, it's called The Wealth Journey. It came out last August, it's got some good reviews on Amazon. I get a bunch, I mean a bunch of hardcover sales, but it's in hardcover, paperback, and there's a Kindle version. So depending on what you like and what your price range is, it's all up there on Amazon. And a lot of people from a lot of different age ranges really liked it, but I think that book best serves the people watching this video right here, right now. I think the book best fits someone who is young, ambitious, wants to do things at a young age, like for example, moving out of your parents' house, getting your own place, getting established, getting a full-time job, getting a good degree, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can think of a lot of different things that young, ambitious people wanna do. That's who that book is for. 100%. And the reason why it's important to read that before moving out is because you get to see life from the perspective of someone who did the things that you want to do. So I moved out of my parents' house at a young age. I graduated from college. I got the good degree. I got the good job. I thought everything was all good, but life is not going to be that kind to you once you move out of your parents' house. It doesn't matter where you live at, what state, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be some type of hardship, some type of challenge in your life, and you've got to be emotionally ready for that. And my book not only talks about how I got through it, but in the book, I also give you advice on how to avoid those situations. And it breaks down how to understand exactly what you can afford based on how much you're making after taxes. It breaks down budgeting methods. It breaks down paying off credit cards. It breaks down not getting in the credit card debt in general. And it breaks down a lot of concepts and scenarios, like real life things that happen. So that makes the book interesting and it kind of makes you wonder, well, what's, what's going to happen next? Why did this happen? Why did that, is that going to happen to me? You know, because these are the things that happen in life and different variations of it are going to happen to different people but the whole point is reading the book and understanding it from my perspective understanding it from my expertise when it comes to personal finances as well as from a professional standpoint it helps you navigate through those things so yes this is a shameless plug i will never apologize for that but i do think a good start would be reading a book that's like 170 pages you could read it in a weekend if you wanted to you could even highlight the points that really represent where you're at in life right now and you can keep rereading that area if you want to and it's a very low level investment in terms of money for what you'll get out of it and it has a bunch of tools inside of it to help you build a bigger brighter wealthier future for yourself for your family and for the families to come after that when i wrote this book i had nothing but the future in mind i was highly motivated writing it i was obsessed with doing it so i made it my mission last year to make sure i completed it and i had you in mind when I wrote it. So I think that would be a very good first step for you to do. But anyway, we're gonna move on to the second step. The second thing you need to do is set your priority straight. What do I mean by that? I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. I know a lot of people, right? Different areas of life, different ages, different experience, the whole nine. But the thing is, when you move out of your parents' house, doesn't matter if you're 20 or if you're 30, you're going to start experiencing a different level of freedom that you're probably not used to, especially when it's your place, you have no one to answer to. I always say this, a lot of people don't realize this, but you don't want to have to answer to anybody. I mean, sure, at work, you answer to your boss and all that stuff, right? But outside of work, you really, as a grown person who pays your own bills and supports yourself, you don't want to be answering to anybody but yourself and God, and that just makes sense. As a result, since you have no one that's gonna be knocking on your door, coming to your room, asking you questions, why isn't this clean, why isn't that clean? You have to set your priorities straight. You have to figure out what is important to you. So a lot of people who get a good job, get their own place, 
they're like, cool, I'm going to splurge now. I'm going to get a brand new car that I didn't even research. Well, how much car can I afford? You know what I mean? I'm sure you've heard how much house can I afford, but a lot of people don't even look up how much car can they afford, right? And as a result, they don't look into anything. They just see that price tag, which is their salary, and they're like, oh, I'm good. I'm making sixty, seventy, two thousand dollars $72,000 a year. They don't realize that's not the real number you're making. What you're making is what you make after taxes. And that's not like a mind-blowing idea. I'm sure you know that, but People don't really know that, know that. Like they know it in the back of their mind, but they don't think about it till it's actually time to pay taxes. They don't actually think about it until they realize their paycheck is dramatically shorter than what it should be due to all the taxes being taken out. I felt a similar way. I say everything in moderation. You know, you gotta be diligent in moderation because if you're all about work all the time, it might drive you insane. But on the other hand, if you're too comfortable, you might become a couch potato that don't be doing nothing. Feeling about useless. We can't be having that around here. So what you want to do is in your notes app or whatever app it is that you take notes in, or if you just like to write notes on pen and paper, like the old school folks used to do back in the day, you can do that too. But you need to write down what your priorities are, what is important to you. So I'll give you an example of exactly what I mean by set your priorities straight. So for me, a priority was always being in a financially good spot, which meant I wasn't living paycheck to paycheck. It meant that I was able to have X amount of money left over for myself at the end of every single month. And I could either save it. I could either splurge it. I could invest it. I, I had that mindset at a young age. This was 21 year old me. I wasn't perfect, but I at least had an idea of what direction I wanted to go to in life. You want to have that too. So that was one of my priorities. Another priority of mine, I've been super big on fitness and physical health. So another priority of mine was I must have a gym membership. I must go to the gym X amount of times a week. Uh, I usually go three to four times a week. That's how it's always been, even when I was in high school. So that's how it is now. And another thing I was big on was not partying. Uh, for some of you, it might be a priority to go out with your friends and have fun. That's fine. But I'm just telling you, for me, I was very big on, no, I'm going to have the most boring year possible because when you're starting out, I believe you need to come out aggressive. Like you, you, you're in your twenties, you're like 21, 22. You're trying to be out here trying to make it. I think if you set the most professional expectation for yourself at a young age, no matter what it is that you're doing, I think that'll trump anyone who doesn't because I had just started out. I went from being in school taking notes, you know, sleeping in class, to be honest with you, because class was about boring. A lot of it came natural to me. So I was one of those students, like I wasn't really paying attention in class or at least didn't seem like it, but I would be acing the test. That's how I was a student. You didn't need to know that, but I decided to give it to you anyway. But anyway, I went from that, that cozy lifestyle to, oh, I'm in charge of people now. I'm in manufacturing. I've never stepped foot in a building that's like a manufacturing facility. And we make tires and we start the tires from chemicals and we make them into solids and then we build tires. I didn't even know you build tires. Like it was crazy. So, so I had to manage this big operation. A lot of people who were way older than me, I'm talking double, triple my age, some of them. And there might've been one or two that were my age, but they worked under me. So like what I'm saying is, it's a completely different mindset and a completely different skill when it comes to managing people while also using what you learned in college, which honestly wasn't very much, but it did require a lot of thinking and planning ahead. And those were tools that I wasn't used to using like on the fly. Like I could think ahead for like a week or for like a month when it came to my college schedule or when I would go to the gym or when I would hang out with my friends. But it's different when, hey, this thing just happened. It could cost the company X amount of dollars. What are you doing about it right now? What is your plan for the future to like it, it, stuff like that kind of took me aback a little bit, answering questions on the spot, getting information on the spot, organizing labor. Like it, it was crazy. So I decided I've never liked going out. The club scene was never for me. I never found it fun or enjoyable or pleasant or any positive word that you could think of. All I heard was loud music. When you're talking to somebody, like you got to talk really loud and fights are breaking out over here. It's like, I don't got time for all of this. And then, and then they can't even fight. They can't even fight. We're not even going to go there. This is a, this is going to be a professional video, but I'm just saying 
it wasn't for me. Plus, I don't drink. I don't see the point in going out and doing those types of things if you're someone who's like me. So I focus all my energy on my profession, on my job, learning the job, learning the people, learning the process. Anything I could learn, I learned. And I, I explicitly uh, talk about that in my book. It's a different type of drive, but I think it leads to success because now I'm in a much better place making double the money working half the time. It is a very, very big blessing that has taken place in my life. And these same things or similar things can happen to you, but you have to be clear on exactly what you want to do. So I was focusing on that, but I was also focusing on outside of work passion. I was focused on what am I passionate about? I knew I was passionate about helping people. I just didn't know what I was passionate with helping people do. So I know that now, but back then I didn't. So I spent time going to seminars. I spent time networking and talking to people and, and getting mentorship and getting coaching when it came to certain things. And I learned about emotional intelligence and I learned about so many things that they don't really teach you in school. Maybe if you're a psych major, you might learn about emotional intelligence or maybe some business majors. But I, I majored in industrial engineering. We didn't like the only reason I knew anything about emotional intelligence was one, I read one book in college for a leadership class, which was not explicitly taught in the class. It was like a side option that you could do. We had a presentation and you had the choice of reading a book in terms of psychology or a book in terms of overall leadership. And I chose psychology because I found it to be way more interesting. So I say all that to say, as you talk to more people and you immerse yourself in it, you learn even more about things that you thought you already knew about. Like, I thought I knew about emotional intelligence, but until you actually apply it in real life, when people are getting on your nerves and you have to remain calm under pressure, and the whole world around you is just up in flames. I mean, we had stuff like hurricanes. We had power outages. We had potential fires about to start. Like, I had to evacuate people, then go out and risk, and risk my life along with some other people who were leaders on the team, to help mitigate these issues. Going into a dark plant by yourself with a flashlight, hey, is anybody left in here? Like, stuff like that. And those things I never minded doing, I'm just telling you, it's a completely different mindset and a completely different life than someone who's used to going to class and then maybe you go back to your dorm room and take a nap. Or maybe after your nap, you wake up, you go to the dining hall, you meet a few friends, then you hit the gym, boom. And then you go to the library, do some studying, boom. You're done for the day, you go back, and then you keep repeating every single day. And maybe every day isn't like that, but my whole point is that is a way more comfy life than being accountable and responsible for every single thing that you do inside of work. Because everything you do inside of work determines if you get a paycheck that you bring home to then pay for the bills that you have lined up for yourself because you wanted to move out of your parents' house. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so feeling that discomfort, I just knew that, man, I don't want to work for someone for the rest of my life. I don't want to be capped at a certain salary. I don't want to feel like I'm at the mercy of my boss's worst day. I don't want to feel like I'm just a number and just some kid who doesn't know anything just because I just started. Like, who are these guys to treat me like I don't know anything and like I ain't going to be nothing just because I'm younger than all of them? I'm here trying to better myself and improve myself every single day. And these guys have grown up in this plant. Essentially, since they were 18 years old, most of the people who were under me had been working there for like 20, 30 years. So, of course, they're going to know it way better than someone who's never been there before. I, I could tell you that. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a toddler, you know what I'm saying, could tell you that. But that's just how it was, and I had to overcome those things. So that's where the passion and everything helped with that. You know, I had a few outlets to kind of help me stay at bay, even though I wanted to punch somebody in the face. Of course, I would never do that in a professional environment, but I'm just saying. Again, this is 21-year-old me talking, not 27-year-old me. I'm a different man now. It made me want to learn more about making money outside of work, and it made me want to learn about passive income. And throughout the years, I've been able to build that for myself. I'm still not where I want to be yet, but I am well on my way. So that was what was important to me. And of course, this was not in any particular order, but that was my list. Physical health, making sure that my finances were right, 
making sure I had an outlet of passion, which for me was the gym, but it was also going to seminars and things like that. It was something about that experience that was exhilarating to me. A lot of people think they're boring. The events I went to weren't boring at all. So it is what it is. And I was focused on eliminating things that I definitely didn't like doing, like partying, wasting my time and stuff. I didn't play a lot of video games. I didn't watch a ton of TV. I was really grinding at work every single day when I would come home. I would be looking on YouTube. I would be searching articles. I would be reading books. How do I get X amount of outcomes? You know what I mean? I read books about emotional intelligence. I read books about leadership to help me within my career. I, I read books about money management. I read books about how to get passive income. I listened to a lot of podcasts, just a bunch of different perspectives. I listened to a lot of things. I didn't get too much sleep back then because I was getting like maybe four or so hours because I was so obsessed with the future and the outcomes of what I was doing right then that I could have in the future. And I don't regret that because I look at where I'm at now and I'm light years ahead of where I was and I can only imagine where I'll be five years from now. So I can't stress this enough. This is probably the most important thing on the list to do. Number three, make a list. This is similar to the last one, but it ain't the same. So listen up to this one, all right? Number three, make a list of everything you need to do and then go behind that and make a separate list of things that you need and put prices next to them. So let me break this down for you. When you make the list of things that you need to do, you might need to do something like, say, get car insurance, right? You might need to do something like get renter's insurance for your apartment. But you also might be looking at your savings account. And I know I already told everybody in the last videos I made about moving out. Ideally, if you're moving out of your parents' house, you want to have five figures in your savings account, preferably about $20,000 in your savings account. I said that for a reason, but a lot of people don't feel like that's attainable. And a lot of people just straight up don't want to wait that long. So they'll settle for, you know, $1,000, $4,000, $5,000. That's fine. But you have to understand what comes with that. So you might look at your bank account and you might move, you might have moved out, you might have paid your, um, you might have went ahead and paid your fees, you might have paid your first month rent, and now you're looking at it and you're still waiting for your first paycheck from work or whatever the case is. Maybe you already had a job. My point is, maybe you're looking at your savings account and you're like, this isn't as much as I thought it was going to be by the time I got to this point. If you feel that way, you need to put more money in your savings account. So something that you need to do on that list would be make a savings account, specifically an emergency fund. And now that you're on your own, what I tell my audience, my main audience about personal finance is make sure in your regular savings account, you have at least 2000 Boom. Okay, that's one savings account. You can leave that alone after you hit 2000 Now let's talk about your emergency fund, which is going to have three to six months worth of paychecks. You want to have three to six months worth of paychecks. After tax paychecks, that is. Because a lot of us out earn our expenses. So I'm not going to tell you to save three to six months worth of expenses because what if something happens and you just don't have enough to cover it? But if you save up three to six months worth of paycheck, you're probably going to have a good amount in there and it's going to take a while to do but that's something to go towards so something you need to do is put that on the list and once you make this list of things you need to do like first of all like lists of things i need to do open up a 401k open up a roth ira save three to six months worth of expenses for my emergency fund i already have my 2000 that's checked off the list we're good and as you're doing this you're going to be numbering them from what's priority to what's going to be a lesser priority but still is important so you might have five things on your list and then let's say after that you're like cool i did all those things now i want to open up an individual investing account for myself so that i can invest in stocks that's what I would personally do, and if I could do it all over again, that's what I would have done, and I would have been a lot richer than I am now. I have an investing course coming up, so if you are interested, I do also have an investing series on YouTube, which is free, and I just started my first episode last week, and I'm going to do a new episode every other week or so. Sometimes it'll be every week, sometimes it'll be other, every other week, just depending on how my schedule is that week. So anyway, that list that you just created, that is called your priority list. And now you have a whole separate list. And these are going to be things that you want slash need to pay for. So, for example, if you're moving out on your own, you might have your TV and you might have your entertainment system for your TV to go on. But you might not have like a bedroom set. You might not have 
a mattress. You might not have a kitchen table. You might not even have a couch. When I moved out, I had nothing. So I completely understand being at that point. And some of you might have your parents and your family help you out. That's what I had happen to me, which was a great blessing. And some of you may not because not everyone's family can do that for you because they might have other priorities that they have to take care of. And that's fine too. But the bottom line is, this is going to help you prioritize. You have your priority list and you look at your list of wants slash needs. And if you're doing this correctly and if you watch my other videos about moving out that gives you advice on things to do before you move out or as you're moving out, you're going to have less and less things on your wants slash needs list because the more you can save up while you're living with your parents' house, the more things you'll be able to afford yourself once you move out. Make sense? You're going to want to look at okay what type of accessories do i have what type of kitchen utensils do i have you know you might not have forks spoons or knives you know do you want to get paper plates plastic forks and spoons how do you want to do it we're going to just you know bum it out for a little bit there's nothing wrong with that or do you want to get like really high grade materials do you want to get cast iron pans and pots do you want to get you know the cool sets of the forks and spoons and all of that stuff I don't know all the terminology for kitchen stuff, so you gotta forgive me on that one. But just make lists for yourself and then write out stuff like, I mean, you like to, your place to smell good, don't you? So you might, you know, candles, you know what I'm saying? You might wanna get some cologne if you're a guy or perfume if you're a girl. Like, there's gonna be things that outside of your apartment and outside of your places you wanna get for yourself. You know, to treat yourself, smelling good, looking good, feeling good. These are the type of things that I'm talking about. You might want to get a new game system, but it, you all have to, you have to tie these three things in together. You have to set your priority straight first. Once you set your priority straight, you make your priority list. After you make your priority list, you make your want slash needs list. And I'm telling you that right there is the trifecta. That right there is going to get you to places that if you didn't do any of these things, wouldn't and sometimes you might need a crisscross in between lists because some of the things on your want slash needs list won't be that expensive you get a cast iron pan it might run you about 50 bucks or so cool you can do that and you can save money at the same time so you can mark two things off the list at once you know because once you make your priority list you can curate it into a smaller list so if your savings goal for example you need like a thousand dollars more then you can, if you want that by the end of the year, you can then calculate how much you need to save per month for the rest of the year and you'll get there. That can help you check things off the list a lot faster than not really having a plan because everything you put on your list, you're definitely gonna wanna have a plan for. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It could just be, I'm gonna save $100 a month for the next 10 months and we good. And if I want to get there faster, maybe it's $150 a month, maybe it's $200 a month, but you get to play with that stuff. You get to do stuff like set your budget in order and make sure that you're good because First and foremost, you are responsible for yourself. No one else, you can't blame this on anybody. You wanted to move out of your parents' house. So this is what you must do before you make those steps. And I promise you, you will be much further ahead. Anyway, I gotta go. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.